so now you're hot. The, 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 the record just had about four or five major hits on it, you know. Mm. Um, um, did you at that time, did, did you always know that Bobby might not be around? <laughs> you can, Bobby always was, like there was something about New Edition that was just too, confined. wasn't representing, the, letting them represent the full Bobby, basically. Bobby, yeah, okay. It was real confined. Right, right, confined. Right. And we all had that side to us, but we understood that this is working. This is getting out there, man. We need to you know, hold on to it. Right, Bobby right, was right. a little bit less like, you know. Right. We started doing all kind of wild stuff that fit Bobby and his image. He wanted to put out the kind of music that, we listened to and we came up and the people around the way that we right. come from listen to. He wanted to be that dude for the block. So, but you did you know he was that in, that kind of personality when y'all brought him into the yeah, group? Wasn't, yeah, we knew he was that type of dude. Okay. Bobby was running around the projects in the summertime with leather pants on and sticking his pants like, you know, coming up to the other kids like, get uh-huh. get down, get right, you know. right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so y'all doing, knew what it was when y'all he got was really him. doing that as a little boy. So. Wow, we all, we all had moments where we did our wild stuff. So it wasn't like Bobby was. I, that's the projects we all had people and friends in our clicks no i get he that but was literally after a while new edition is holding them back but what but what you said or, no what you just said you got other four three y'all mm-hmm. knew what to do y'all like we, we gonna keep this rolling mm-hmm. he was so wild like damn the, the successful stuff i'm gonna try my own shit that's major at that time to leave a successful group yeah. you guys knew the business of saying this is working mm-hmm. let's milk this longer that's you know right. what i'm saying it takes a lot of nuts to do. It, it sure does. Yeah, and when, when he and when he, when he took his two nuts out the group, mm-hmm. how did you uh how did y'all take it? Was you a little a little? I just stir? pump. I just pump my nuts up. Oh, but there, there, that damn nuts for nuts and That's shit, it. right? We kept it moving. Damn. Yeah. That's okay. I, I did, y'all, y'all nutty in that group. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, That's a part of the success. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> did um, <laughs> what was it a certain type of relief when he left? Let's be honest. You know, no, say, it wasn't Oof. at first. It was kind of scary. First okay. feeling is that, man, people are used to seeing us the way they saw us. Mm-hmm. You know, is this going to be something that puts this disdain on the group right. or whatever? You know, you don't know what it's going to do. You feel bad that you might leave your homie. If mm-hmm. that stuff that whatever he's trying to do don't mm-hmm. work out, mm-hmm. you know, there's all kind of emotions about it. Um, at the end of the day, when, you, when you're coming out, out the gate, you, you know, the team you start with is the one you think you're going right, to win sure. with. You know, you're, gonna sure. keep, you're starting to win with. You figure that's how you're going to cross the finish line. So when that started happening, it was just a lot of stuff that just wasn't the plan. You know I mean? Right, right, right. I can see it being be nerve-wracking like. because you guys, again, consistently thinking, keep the group stay, yeah. steady. This is working. We, we got hits. Let's move. So he goes away. Um, I don't remember the timeline. He put an album out before y'all put y'all next, the Heartbreak, Heartbreak album, right? <laughs> yeah, he did. Okay, so when you see his success, how did that make you feel? And we in the panic room, nigga. Be well, you know, it was kind of weird because the first album that he put out didn't really do much. That's sure enough, right? Like yeah. Janet Jackson's first album. The King of Stage one. album, okay. had hits and stuff. We loved him. I thought it was a smash album. I was mm-hmm. real proud of him. Mm-hmm. You know, the King of Stage being one of my favorite joints on the album. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know if the imagery, something didn't connect right. the promotion, the way he was pu- pushing them, or whatever. Something didn't connect with that album. Girlfriend came off there and it was a pretty good single for him. Right, so I remember that one. That mm-hmm. worked out. And the rest of it, and he came out, he had the Larry Blackman jock strap yeah, come on. Come on, the yeah, cameo that, and all yeah, that. They had the matching on. straps. Yeah. yeah. That, became, yeah. <laughs> that became something that I don't think it hit the It didn't hit the block. Like, right. Know. So coming into the next album, it was more of a. But let me ask you, but when it's not been successful as you think, do you think like you need to come back, homie, or you done fucked no, up leaving? Not at all. Really? I don't think any of that. He was okay. Bobby was in his, Bobby had the opportunity to come back before he even started the first album. Okay. It's like, yo, if you really want to push the issue, you know, that's my guy. Let's go. You know, I'll go to bat, we going in there. They ain't right. Get, they ain't getting another album, at least not like the one they think they're gonna make money with. Right. So, um, he said, Nah, man, I'm good. I wanna do this. I really wanna try this. So I all right. Yeah, y'all better than me, because I got an ego, bro. I'd be like, man, come on, son. Come on back. This ain't working for you over there. Let's get this thing right, man. But okay, y'all y'all different. Roxbury, you know, I'm from D.C., so it's different. Listen, it's different. Man, all right, out. all right. Let me ask you. So when y'all got, okay, I'm from D.C., so I remember mm-hmm. Stacey Ladder saw a guy named Johnny Gill. Right. Okay? So Johnny Gill was popular in D.C., you know, mm-hmm. he had a strong voice. Who makes the selection of picking him, and how did you feel when they picked him? The selection was made to bring Johnny in the group Around the time when I was in Boston working on solo music. It wasn't really solo for a solo project per se, it was just mm-hmm. solo music. I was okay. a guy with a friend of mine named Dwayne Omar, and we started working on music. Whether it was going to be for me, we was going to start becoming a production team, mm-hmm. and 
we was talking about being a production team, Silver and Gold, or something was calling it back then. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Somehow the, this comes to the group that I'm leaving and we're supposed to be doing all this other stuff. So they started trying to figure out how do they go forward from here, if that is the case, whether it was real or not. Mm-hmm. And so they started talking to Johnny Gill. I think that was by all of them. Management was doing that. Michael. My, oh, my, oh, my, oh Michael. The group okay. members themselves doing that between Ricky, Michael, and Johnny. I mean, Rick, Ricky, Michael, and, and Ronnie. These are the conversations they were having. And mm-hmm. They could have been talking to um, some of the management people at the time. I right. don't know, but I don't. I was thinking you might be leaving. Right. right. Wow. I'm under the assumption that that's what's happening. But you know, they never had the conversation with me first. They never talked to me. I never right. really think anything about it. Right. I show up to do the Heartbreak album in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Right. And that's the first time I saw Johnny Gill as supposedly a new edition member. Right. So I had never heard anything about it. So they can feel it. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis is like, of course. they're trying to cut records. They're trying to get us to focus on what type of records we want to do and whatever. And I'm like. But it was thick, it was thick up in there. Yeah, they, was, they pulled us to the <laughs> side and just like, hey, man, what's going on? We can feel this. What's, right, what's right. The problem? Sure. And, you know, he couldn't stay. He couldn't ask us fast enough. So I'll tell you the problem. I don't know what, what's going on. I don't even know why Johnny, why. This why? Moment, like, right. cool. Hey, what you doing so here, homie? What's happening? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like y'all never told Ralph Johnny's in, and this is they was just as stunned. Wow. The whole room is like, yeah. Right. Nobody, now we're all figuring this out for the first time right now, baby. So, right. That's how Johnny came in the group from my perspective. Let me ask you: It was was anybody else named, you know, flying around, floating around? Not that I know of. Well, you didn't know shit. You didn't know Johnny was floating no, around. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I can see Elder Bar. I didn't even in retro hear anything that day. Yeah, we was thinking about. I'll be sure with y'all. Yeah, so not the, no, <laughs> wouldn't think about that. I'll be sure it's too tall. <laughs> wow, is that what it is? Y'all the hype like it? He's too tall for us, man. That's he funny. Make everybody look like shrimps. Okay, so once the album, the Heartbreak, Heartbreak album comes out and it becomes so successful, mm-hmm. did you feel like okay, this is this is vindicate? It worked, you know? Or did you know when it was going to work while y'all were recording? Or did you say when it came out, like, damn? I'm cool with Johnny now. This is working. I felt like we had hits when we were recording. Okay. I felt like, okay, this is a nice little return for new edition. Some mm-hmm. of the records really was that. Not, and, I, and at the same time, I was listening to Guy's new album about to drop. I'm mm-hmm. listening to the Prerogative album, the Don't Be Crew album. I'm mm-hmm. listening to these this other style that's getting ready, that's already kind of warming up in the streets sure. already, but they about to drop them in a real way. With the guy album, Bobby's mm-hmm. "Don't Be Cruel" album, it was Keep Sweat was coming with some more stuff. It was just mm-hmm. a, a little army of Teddy Riley and this sure. style that was about to hit the scene. That right, right. I felt like we we was, we should have had some of that on there with it. If we would have had a little bit of that with us, we could have kept a little bit more on the heart on on, on heartbreak, heartbreak album. Yeah, really? heartbreak album was a little more traditional, grown up, grown. You know, right. It, it was different from your first there album. There was no album. street reflection, like we're yeah. saying. If you think about the Don't Be Cool album, oh, I the see what Poison you're album, the albums we end up doing as individuals yeah, to I get, get that style out, that wasn't on that album. More street, okay, okay. A little bit more of that in there. I think we would have been, we'd have just kind of like laced ourselves with growing up with some of those songs, bringing Johnny in, maturing the sound, um, not just for the radio, but the clubs and the whole thing. Right, this is right. not a club record, radio. You know, right, I mean, right. Club record type group, you know. Being that it was successful, okay. Um, when you decided to leave, I think you decided to leave because everyone else started to leave because you really didn't want to leave. Am I mistaken? Mm-mm, that's and, true. That's true. And you just basically said, well, all right, if y'all gone, then I got to make something happen for myself. Yeah. If and I that's gonna, why you left because of that exactly. more. Exactly. Even, eventually when everybody started working on their own projects, uh-huh. so I'm just sitting still. And this could get ugly. This could turn into, well, when do I work again? I know that's right. When do I do something again to make sure I can feed my family? If everybody's running around doing stuff that... And it took a long time too. Between the six of Bobby went out there, sold millions of records. BBD right, sold sure. millions of records. Johnny mm-hmm. sold millions of records. And I've luckily I got out there and sold me a few millions myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah, watching all that going, you don't know when the next thing is gonna happen. So I had to take take advantage of, you know, right. running around as a right. solo artist just so I ain't the only one sitting around. But I didn't want to do it. So let me take advantage of it since right. it might be a while. Well, it was a huge, that, that, your first album, Ralph Transman album, that sold two million copies. That's beautiful. And the, the lead sensitivity, sensitive, sensitivity. That that song there. Let me ask you, <laughs> are you are you fine with being known as a sex symbol? Sex symbol, because you know that always. I don't even know if that's always what it's been. I just always like he's cute. 
Mm. He's handsome. So mm. you know, as you get older, you hear those things. But the sex symbol thing, man, I never even thought twice about it. It's just, and I say, oh, and I say that because that sensitive song. You know, real right. niggas ain't give a fuck about that damn song. You're like, oh, no. that bullshit. You that's for the ladies until and shit, nigga. They, until they's with their lady. Yeah, yeah. but then I'm like, you know, I can't minutes. play that in the car with niggas with my niggas and yeah, shit. Yeah, you ain't for every song ain't for that. Right, okay, right. That's what I'm saying. So you yeah. was kind of pushing toward the lay lays. You know, he's such a gentleman. That's what the album was about. Yeah. And that's why, like, you had Bobby on that song. On the sensitivity or no, Stone no, Cold Gentleman? No, yeah, so, I'm sorry, Stone Cold Gentleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah Bobby Brown. So it showed that y'all still could work together. You know, so it wasn't a beef that no. people thought it was. Because you know, sometimes no. when, people, when people break up, they think it's a problem. No, it's a man, beef. Bobby wanted to go, so he wanted to do his own thing. Right. You know? He wanted right. to give it a try. These are, the record company was coming to him. Saying, right. man, listen. Sure. What you want to do? We'll give it a shot. They saw him. They knew that that little... Knucklehead attitude right. from around the way I'm was appealing to everybody. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It's yeah, like yeah. that's what he, that's what people are being. It's it, that guy is being exposed right now, and people are loving him right. with the hip hop and the rap and all that. So Bobby coming out, kind of the singing version of that, was um was genius. So okay. they stepped to him about it, and he made it happen. Well, well, I'm gonna tell you something. So I went on tour with you guys. Uh, we did a couple of dates um, on the Home Again uh, yeah. tour. And I'm gonna tell you something was interesting. Again, I wasn't, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the dude, so I ain't, you know, the ladies love y'all more, you know. I respected y'all, I like y'all, but I ain't about to cheer and scream for y'all in the front row. They, you know, you know I what I mean? I hope not. Yeah, you know how we do. Um, I'll tell you what I noticed, man. What? If Bobby wasn't there, that people was pissed the fuck off. Oh, this was after the Don't Be Cruel success and all that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like 98. I expecting that. It was the same way this tour. We just did a tour to sold out almost 90-something percent of it. I saw it. And the same well, thing. I saw it online. If he doesn't come, it's just like a letdown in the building, man. Everybody, That's... they want to see everybody do all of that stuff, man. You know, it's like the yeah. Jacksons and you yeah. don't see Michael or something. It's like, okay, I didn't get my full experience tonight. But, but, yeah. You know, you know, yeah. I think y'all, yeah, yeah. It works together as New Edition. When you take too many parts out, it doesn't feel the same to me. I went to see The Temptations some years ago, and I don't know who it was, but the guy who'd only sing the most had the group. Eric Ross was, was new, and it was him. Mm -hmm. And that would be like, and I'm not being, but I'd be like, if Ronnie DeVoe was the only guy and five other people with New Edition, I'm mm -hmm. like, where's the rest of the group? You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Or whoever, you know what I'm saying? No, I get it. The guy who ain't the most popular leading person I out there. You. If you like that clip, hit the subscribe button or the notification bell. In fact, why don't you hit both of them?